Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I wanted to discuss this piece of news that uh, was fairly aggravating just from the title itself. The title is framing it in, a, in what I find to be in a man manipulative way, in my opinion. It says, Biden It says caving on $1,400 checks would break a promise. I probably shouldn't be as mad at the title as I should be at the individual who gave the quote. It says, caving on $1,400 checks would break a promise. So in the United States, there was this um, hubbub over stimulus and $2,000 checks. There was a plan to get $2,000 checks out. It got put down to $600 in December. And I remember Biden saying that that would be a down payment on future stimulus once he gets in office. So if you're talking about $2,000 and $600 was given and the vocabulary used was that's going to be a down payment for later, it really does sound like later on you're going to get $1,400. So there's no, no real big issue there. The issue then comes with the Georgia Senate race that occurred in the beginning of January. In the Georgia Senate race, they really were using language that led you to believe that you were getting a $2,000 check. Lots of people were expecting $2,000 checks after that, and lots of people are kind of pissed off that they backpedaled. And the problem is that they said 1400 after the fact. What they said is, no, 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 you, we, we, you don't understand. It's going to be the 600 you got and then 1400 to make 2000 but if you listen to the rhetoric that was used during the Georgia race, they were very clear about getting you $2,000 checks. So if you already got a $600 check, right? You already got a $600 check. And they say, we're going to give you $2,000 checks. If you already have a $600 check, then that does not mean that we're counting your last check. So if you're my landlord, let's just say you're my landlord. And I say, I'm going to pay my rent this month. So I give you $1,000, right? And then my rent for the next month, because rent went up, is $1,100. And I say, okay, I'm going to give you $1,100. But then I only give you $100. And I say, no, 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 I gave you $1,000 last month. So this month you wanted $1,100. So here I'm giving you $100. That's not how this works. If you wrote someone a check already, and then you say after you wrote them that check, that you are going to write them another check for X amount, you do not count the amount of the last check. That's not how common sense works. That's not how any of this works. And what's really bothersome about all of this is just it just showcases the all the I kind of wonder if a lot of the general social unrest and economic unrest is stemming from the fact that we have one of the most disjointed COVID responses I've ever seen. So just to be clear, if we took the route of listen, this virus is serious. It's going to kill people. It's going to spread. It's not going to go away for a while. So what we need to do right now is shut everything down. It's going to suck. Sacrifice. Shut everything down for a month. A month, nothing. We're not going to do anything. And we are going to pay you all for that month that we shut down or that two months that we shut down. Everybody's going to get paid. I know it's going to be bad. I know we're going to be adding to the national debt and printing money and blah, blah. But we need to do this. So let's do it together. I could understand that. Also, if we took the path of, listen, the last time Lewis brought up this uh, New York City data for coronavirus deaths, the death toll for people without pre-existing conditions between the age of 25 to 34 was five. It has been about five months since Lewis first brought this up, and now it is up to six. It's very clear that this virus is killing people who are elderly and have pre-existing conditions, and people who are young without pre-existing conditions, not all of them, but for the most part, are fine. We cannot shut down the economy for this. We cannot shut everything down for this. We cannot, uh, we, we cannot print endless amounts of money and borrow endless amounts of money and destroy the economy. So we are going to keep the economy open. We are going to protect the elderly and people with pre-existing conditions. We are going to set up systems so that they do not have to go outside regularly for the things that they need. We are going to come together to help them out. And young people are going to wear masks, socially distance, do everything they can, keep things clean, but they are going to go back to work. They're going to wear masks. They're going to put it over their nose. They're not going to be dumbasses like Chuck Schumer and get on national national television talk about how important it is to wear a fucking mask and wear it like this like a dumbass it's fucking senate majority leader oh my god anyway and we are going to move forward i could also understand that but what we did is pretty much the worst of both worlds what we did is we said okay we're gonna we're gonna have these lockdowns and we're gonna shut down a lot of the economy oh oh you need to pay your bills oh isn't that cute that sounds like a you problem why don't you get a job as an essential worker get me the money when I need it. Is there yeah, you a fundamental want to go, right, right you want to go to, go to work? work? Go take the job as an essential worker. Do it tomorrow. Right? You're working. I am. You're an essential worker. So go take a job as an but, essential but, worker. But the what a fucking degenerate piece of shit. But moving on. So we pretty much had the worst of both 
worlds. And you have a country of people that feel like they've been completely left behind, completely fucked over. And when I look at a lot of the social unrest that occurs, whether it's people YOLOing, you know, the, the last one or three thousand dollars that they borrowed into a into a meme stock as it hits three hundred fifty dollars, or whether it's people that are just like again storming the Capitol, turning protests into riots last summer, all this type of stuff. I kind of wonder like how much of the base of that results from a feeling of anxiety, economic anxiety, that stems from the fact that people believe that nobody has their back, ever. That when there is a problem as a country, we are going to try and address the problem, but we're not going to address the the fallout that occurs from what we did to address the problem together. In a ma- Again, w- w- did other nations do COVID perfectly? No. But there are a lot of other nations out there where they tried to take care of their people in a manner that was considerably better than what we did. And we have the worst of both worlds. We have lockdowns. We have not enough help. But then when, when the, the, you know, the, the pot finally boils over, we wind up with f- finally deciding, OK, we are going to spend you know, billions or trillions on the Paycheck Protection Program, billions or trillions on, on stimulus and everything else after the fact. But that's after everybody's already fucked and after everybody's already said, OK, listen, if you're not going to help me out here, then I'm going to go back to work. I don't care about your stupid rules. And then COVID spreads. We literally have the worst of both responses. We have the worst from both worlds. We could have gone this way or that way, but we pretty much took, hey, let's take the worst economic results of that. Let's take the worst pandemic spreading results from that. And let's just mix it all together. And that makes me just incredibly sad. And and again, the, the people, like just not even the 2000 versus $1,400 thing, that was a while ago. We're in February. Again, Biden became president on January 20th. The, you know, the senators are in office. So you have the Senate, you have the House, and you have the executive branch. If he wanted to, with, with, again, just uh, budget reconciliatory process, stroke of a pen, pretty much say, okay, listen, we promised you this. We're going to give you this. We're not going to bicker over it for two or three or five or six months and fuck you over. We are going to take care of this right now people would think differently. And I have to wonder, when I see the temperature rising in the United States in general, when I see people putting the last of their money into meme stocks, like borrowing money to put it into GameStop at $350 or $400, when I see people uh, like storming the Capitol, when I see protests that I remember, I remember when there were protests after Michael Brown and Trayvon Martin and everything. And then I remember what happened after those protests last summer. I kind of wonder if the te- just what has been occurring is a result of the temperature rising in the country to this degree. And if part of that temperature rising is the government saying, we are going to screw up your life, but anything that occurs as a result of screwing up your life is now a you problem. Then saying, well, we're going to help you out. And then what, what, by that, we mean we're going to bicker amongst ourselves for six to nine months while we all get paid off of your tax dollars and then not actually do anything for you. This is not good. And this is how you get President Tucker Carlson. I mean, like, I I know that probably sounds ridiculous. But here's the thing. I don't like Trump very much. I get a lot of crap in my comments for it. I don't it's not like I talk about it on a regular basis. If you go back through my last four or five years of videos, you're not going to see me uh, speaking about this in the manner that you might expect someone who has lives in New York and has a social media account to speak about it. A lot of people in New York City that I speak to don't like to acknowledge the fact that there are actual reasons that people voted for him. There were people that felt like they were economically disenfranchised. There were people that were not being listened to. There were people whose lives and family lives were getting worse year after year after year. And someone came along and said, here, you know, I'm going to fix it. Here are the problems that you had. Let me listen to the problems you had. Let me do something about it. Now, whether or not he did something about it, when it, at least when it comes to outsourcing of jobs and manufacturing, I personally don't believe he did much with it. But he said... I'm at least going to listen to you rather than say you're just living in a fantasy world and all that crap's going away. There's a reason that people voted for him. And here's the thing. If there is this precedent set, which is we can say that we are going to provide you with $2,000 of relief, and then it gets diluted to 1400 And then when you have the Senate, the House, and the executive branch, in spite of having a full sweep, you wind up dragging your feet and taking months to do this, then you're you're going to wind up, I'm telling you, you're going to wind up a President Tucker Carlson. If you're not ready to provide what it is that you're offering, then just don't offer it. Just don't make the offer. If you're going to let people suffer, at the very least, let them suffer without the promise of maybe I'm going to give you a bone. This is, uh, this is, 
it's sad to me. It really is. Because like, you could see in the very beginning that people were like, things are going to change. Things are going to change. Things are going to change. And I'm sitting here just thinking, they're probably not. <laughs> they're probably not. And I'm a pessimist. I like being proven wrong. Because when someone like me, who is a pessimist, is proven wrong, that means that something good will happen. And a lot of people kind of wonder, like in 2016, you know, uh, you know, how how did this occur? How did this happen? It's just not caring about the needs of average ordinary people. Like how many people voted in Georgia in those Senate runoff elections that otherwise would not have turned out because, well, you know, if COVID relief has been being blocked for a long time. I can't go to work. I'm not allowed to go to work. And you said, okay, finally, there's going to be some sort of unity where if you're going to say I can't go to work, you're going to have my back. Oh, you lied about the number. Oh, now you're taking forever to deliver. Yeah. What a dumbass I was to go out and vote. And when a candidate winds up showing up that, may, that that is able to actually speak to people and get their trust, you have to wonder, if that candidate winds up being a nutbag, and you think they're a nutbag, how did you get to a point where people were willing to vote for the nutbag? What happened that degraded the trust in the institutions that we used to have? Because so many people like to get up there with, you know, the, 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 their bow tie and their nice hairdo and everything and go, I can't believe nobody trusts our institutions anymore. It's like, wh- wh- why would they? Why would they? At some point, there's going to be zero trust left at all amongst anyone. And that's going to be a really, really bad. This is the beginning of a new administration. This is a clean sweep. They have all three branches of government. They could actually do things to improve people's lives. Or at the very least, if they're not able to improve people's lives, at the very least, they could not promise things that they're incapable or unwilling to deliver. If they promise things repeatedly that they're not able to deliver, you are going to see a swing back to the other side. And I'm just, I'm, we're going to read a lot of crying when it happens, but in the, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to stuff like this. This is what you advertised. This is what you delivered. People are not going to vote for you again. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. This is not financial investing advice. I am not a financial services professional. This is purely my opinion. See you all later.